Right now, these heads um, are pedestal mount, um, meaning that they have a 5 16 uh, bolt hole here uh, to mount the pedestal mount roller rockers. Now, they make it really good. That's a really good setup for a street motor that's really basic. But well, what we're talking about now is uh, supercharging, twin supercharging this motor. So these 5 16 um, bolts are just not gonna cut it because we're starting with a 512 lift cam, it's an F303 cam. But when we start stepping up to like, you know, you're talking about 571 and all that kind of stuff, start getting up there in the lift, these aren't gonna cut it. And that's what we're planning to go in the future. So this boss right here, um, what you see is designed for the pedestal mount. It's a little higher uh, to get the right push rod length. Now we're gonna use some ARP uh, 3 8 studs at first and then we're gonna upgrade to 7 16 uh, later on when we change the rockers. So what we're gonna do here is uh, machine these down uh, 230 thousandths so that we can continue to use the same push rods. Uh, we had some push rods that we had cryo heat treated from uh, TrickFlow. Um, which will actually give us a lot of, uh, of um, strength in that area. So uh, we're gonna pull these heads back off and take them to the machine shop, have the machine 230 thousandths off of this surface here, and then drill uh, and tap this hole uh, to 716-14 NC uh, tap. So here we have a comparison of the pedestal mount setup versus the stud mount setup. And the reason why I'm deciding to go stud mount is because stud mount has more adjustability and it's also stronger than the pedestal mount setup. So as you can see here off top, the, this is the pedestal mount setup over here. So just to do a side by side comparison, we have these uh, 5 16 bolt right here um, that is much thinner and smaller than this uh, stud right here, okay? This is the, the retaining plate that stops uh, the uh, pedestal mount from rotating. And this is the guide plate um, in the stud mount setup for the push rod. This is a stock push rod here. Um, it has these little balls on the end and it's got a sleeve. It's kind of like a two piece setup. And then this is a trick flow put hardened push rod um, that is a lot, to, it's got a thicker wall, it's a lot more um, sturdy. And then also they have a nut with a poly lock for the uh, stud mount setup. And then obviously the steel roller rocker, okay? So the way that this is assembled on the head is you have this rocker here when this causes a lot of friction in this area, kind of slides in just like that. The bolt goes through here. The bolt goes through here just like that. And then it goes through this little plate here and it mounts like that, and it goes like that on the head. Looks good, very stable, easy to adjust, easy to set up, but not very strong. And then with the stud mount setup, basically it goes like this, it goes in there like that on the head. The push rods in this area right here going up and down. This goes through the marker like that and then the nut goes on top okay so that's how that's set up a lot stronger a lot more stable so that's what we're going to set up for we're going to set up for this uh, because i'm going to be running this hard and i don't need my valve train going bad if the valve train goes bad you bend a, bend, bend a, uh, a push rod or something uh you're talking about a catastrophic failure um you know busting a piston open i gotta tear the whole motor apart so this is kind of the area where you don't want to go on the cheaps guys okay so this stud is from arp um i go to the long beach auto swap meet when i need stuff like this um because they usually have a guy out there selling um parts like this i got this steel roller rockers this is from comp cans but as you saw in a couple videos back i got these from my man out there in compton you know what i mean and i got these trick flow um Push rod, I mean these push rod guide plates from um, from a, a Long Beach Auto Swap Meet as well. Okay, so like once again, we're still not buying anything new. We're still uh, you know doing the junkyard thing. Only like one or two things I ended up getting, but not for the most part. You guys can see, man, it's uh, it's still possible. So let's uh, take these heads off of the uh, the black and bring them to the machine shop. So we're gonna machine down the bosses here by 230 thousandths 
to accept uh, the stud instead of these pedestal mount rockers. There'll be like 10 guys, well that's not how you do it. Oh my God, you're breaking safety rules. And oh my God, you didn't do this. You know, like, you know, like, yeah. yeah okay, Shut yeah. up, right, right. Yeah, you know, you took- you Get her done is my thing, just no, get you, it you done. You took one class in high school and you're a master machinist now, you know what I mean? Right, you right, know? right. You Machining know? is the kind of- And you know what? I don't pretend to be like any kind of like great machinist at all. But you know what I mean? But you know what I mean? You know what, I'm sure you've, I, you probably have experienced the internet trolls. Oh my God, how are you doing that? Oh, yep. How many things? engines have you built right literally how many engines have you built no these are forum these are forum mechanics forum mechanics read the forums and then use that to determine because i built a lot of engines i built a, a lot of big blocks that spin in eight and nine thousand rpm in the in early 80s how many engines you built never mind have done something like that <laughs> you know what i mean yeah red dead nuts you same right reading there? off the table we got right now so check it out we're using this gauge right here to determine whether it's flat uh, to the table, which is really dope. We're within one tenth of a degree to the table. I'm not gonna worry about one tenth of a degree. No, nah, hell no. I mean, straight up, I mean, literally one tenth on, of man. a degree, you know? You have 360 degrees, so, and then you take one of those and divide it by 10, you know, and, and across this distance, it's infinitesimal, you know? Man, <laughs> you know? I'm telling you, yeah. yeah. So right, here it is. We're gonna go ahead and machine down the pedestals to set the studs. So at this stage, we're drilling the holes from 5 16ths to uh, 3 U. Or point three, U, U, right? 3.68? Yes, exactly. Okay. To accept the uh, 7 16 14 tap. So now we're tapping it 7 16 14. Alright, so now we're gonna run the countersink. <laughs> Deburr the edges and we're good to go. So there you have it. SVO heads have been uh, machined for the studs. All right, we're good to go, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So what's going on, man? So it's your boy Junkyard Dog in the house and we are kicking it with Paul for Nexa Tires, man. So um, I wanted him to introduce y'all guys to the new brand, all right? At least new to me. So what's up, man? What you got? Well, Nexa Tire is a very young brand, 15 years old, um, as far as going strong. Uh, it is a new brand to the industry. Um, I was previously from another tire company. Uh, took on this job uh, two years ago. Um, to start it all from fresh, but right now, I would say we probably have one of the best tires, and we're leading right now, so you know what I can say. They're leading right now, you know what I'm saying? Tearing it up on the track, man. So uh, what do you guys expect for the future, man? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, we have this industry, we have a lot of other industries that we're going to race, but in this particular tire that we're using over here, but we want to dominate not only on this drifting series, but many other drifting series. That's our goal. Okay, cool. See, domination. That's what we like to hear. Domination. <laughs> so, what's uh, what tire exactly are you using here? What's the name of the tire? The name of the tire is Antara Sur 4T. Okay, cool. cool. Uh, some of the drivers might say Sur 4T. Okay. Uh, it's a UTQG. It's 200. So it's a steel street tire. Okay. Uh, you know, most of the guys right now, Pro One guys, they all use 275, 40, 18. Um, and also, we're one of the two companies that supply tires for the Pro Two. Um, and on that particular size, it's regulated for 255, 35, 18. Oh, okay, okay. Well, check that out, guys. You hear that? So I'm gonna tell him right now. Paul doesn't know, but we have a project in the shop, Project Mayhem from the Texas on it, you know what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is, after we leave here, 
I'm gonna call him up. <laughs> See if we can make something happen. But if not, it's all good. But I'm gonna say, you know, I'm, I'm open for everything. You know what I mean? So yeah, I just wanted to stop and introduce him to you guys because these cats got some new tires on the scene. It's ready to rip. And like you heard him say before, dominate. Exactly. All right. So uh, thank you, man. I all appreciate right, thank the you. time, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you again. All right. We'll, we'll talk about your tires. <laughs> <laughs> Junkyard Dogan. <laughs> What's up, people? You're kicking it with the Junkyard Dog Son. Check. Today we're going to be putting together some rebuilt lifters. Here are some lifter components. This is a retaining clip. This is a spring. This is a cup. This is a plunger. And here's the lifting body. All right. So I had to come in for Chuck here. Uh, because this part requires a little bit of finesse. So that's Chuck in the dog house doing a little work. So anyway, he put in the spring and the plunger. And like I said, you wanna make sure that it's actuating. It feels good to be using a new spring from uh, Century Spring. Now here's a few things I wanted to mention. Even though we coated the oil and everything, you wanna make sure that there's no oil trapped underneath the uh, plunger because it'll be very difficult for you to get the, uh, the cup in there, okay? Um, so you don't want that. So. Once you get the plunger in there, you're gonna take the cup, you're gonna press down in there. Boom, just like that. You can see it. You wanna make sure it's here, it's smooth. There's no oil in there. Okay? It'll pressurize once there's oil in there. Now you take this retaining clip, okay? And then you're gonna press it down. You're gonna put this round side of the retainer in first. Okay. Okay, so you see that? And once you get to that point, you're just going to squeeze the retainer. And you might want to use like some needle nose pliers um, if you're not as dexterous. I'm not very dexterous. I don't have those thin kind of fingers. And there it is. Okay. The retainer kind of goes into a groove that's in the top. And then you just check it, make sure it's actuated. It's moving, it's up and down. Once this pumps up with oil, it's going to get really stiff, and uh, yeah, there you have it. Rebuilt lifter, treated by cryo heat, so it was micro polished, uh, and it's also um, cryo heat treated. So uh, the surface is now very hard and very slick. That's why it keeps fumbling around in my hands. So there you have it, rebuilt lifter, junkyard dog.